Hello and welcome to the Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space and it's the coffee pot challenge so I'm pulling out three prompt cards from my coffee pot tin to see what I will be using today to make something. So there's the first one. A little shake. <laughs> so these are all of my supplies that I know I have and that I can grab and use. If you would like to take part in the coffee pot challenge you may want to put your own your own supplies uh, in the tin in a list. <clears throat> okay let's have a look what we've got today. So we have an eyelet, a charm, a charm and a washi tape and eyelet. Okay they're good, they're good ones. And what I'm going to do is make some paper beads and so for that you're going to need what you see here a selection of washi tapes I've got some more neutral tones and I've got some brights I've also got a metallic one just to see what that looks like one sheet of book page uh, it's not a particularly big one you're going to need a metal ruler so that is four and a quarter inches by seven inches that's what we're working with today so you want a metal ruler you need a stick like a bamboo stick um, a skewer um, a crochet needle knitting needle a thin fine finer the better uh, something to cut with so uh, and a knife a cutting knife a mat what else might you need oh glue uh, some uh, some good glue I've got this in a precision nozzle you could use a Fabri-Tac, you could use oh any sort of runny glue, a PVA glue. If you've got a precision nozzle like this, this would be ideal. Top. Right, we're good to go. We've got our glues, so I'm putting down a little bit of glue stick to begin with. This is all you need, and you may not even need to do this step with the glue stick if your washi tapes are sticky enough. If they go down and they're peeling up straight away, use glue stick. If they stick fairly well and you can't see them peeling up, great. They should grab onto book page quite well because it's um, it's sort of a recycled, more porous paper. Lay it down in strips so it's easy for me to turn the paper that way and start sticking that down. Maybe alternate actually with something pretty and decorative if you've got anything like that. And then sort of bringing in the brights. No stick to that orange one at all. That felt very, felt just like paper. And then I'll bring in maybe the metallic. So I had a look through some of the ones that I keep for Christmas. Because sometimes you've just got the right shade there. They've got some nice greens and things. That's wide again. Might not want the pink. Let's go with this. This has got pink in it. This is very pretty. But we're not going to see it. So we're only looking at the colour. It's all going to get rolled up. Whee. So we won't really just want the colour tone here. This is just a personal preference for me, but I do like to squash down the washi tape so I know that it's stuck. Uh, burnishing it onto the background just helps to straighten everything out, but that is a complete extra step. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, I want about a quarter of an inch at the top. So what we're doing is making slithers like that very fine at the end. You can twist your paper around if you're not ambidextrous like me. <laughs> um, so let's so we could just twist it around so that you can't always doing the same. Alright, so we just carry on making our cuts. I 
Okay, so here's some that I have made already. We're looking to make something like that. That was made with more of a newspaper print. Um, we're going to see what the washi tape gives us because that is obviously a little bit more interesting with the colourway. So um, we'll have a look what we get with these four and then we'll go from there. So we take a strip, we take the stick and go using one end, keep, keep nice and close to the end because you want to slide the bead off at the end when you're finished and it's just easier if anything gets stuck to have a shorter distance to be able to pull the bead off. So you're hooking it over like that into the doweling or the needle, the skewer, the metal skewer, whatever you can find that's this sort of thickness. The thinner the better but it, it might make it more complicated. Then just on, don't get it on the stick and don't get glue on the inside until you have sort of wrapped that over. So you just need to get that started. So this needs to be able to move but you just want to get the glue started on the edge. Okay, and then it, once you've, that's the fiddly bit, once you've achieved that, you can then just do a nice little zigzag of glue and then finish it right the way to the bottom and then start rolling it up very gently. And as you do, you'll find that the glue gets squeezed up and sort of it does, if you've put too much on, it will go out the sides. Important to try and keep that as taut as you can. It does take a little practice. And the important bit is to try and just stick to the middle. You might want to put your thumbnail on a bit of it to keep it in place. You could use um, tweezers. And then you just roll it in. And you just choose which way is easier for you. Maybe you like to see it this way. And just make sure that you are getting that down the centre. And again, it's a nice quiet craft. It's a little bit fiddly. If uh, you have dexterity problems, this may be something that you find you want to cut the paper bigger. And have chunky beads and see how much fun that would be. So just because I'm doing tiny ones doesn't mean you have to do the tiny ones. I think big beads would be really cool, especially as some sort of a spine jewellery on a journal. Okay, and then you simply take it off and leave it to dry. Right, so they are quite sticky when they come off. And then we, we just keep going. So again, you hook the paper over. Trying to sort of think what's best for me. I think this way. Right, do, do whichever way feels better for you. I'm left-handed, I, I don't really know. Just don't want to get the glue on the stick. And then you just you position it so you trap that end in. And you get it straight. It's important to start it off straight and then it, the bead stays straight. So once you've got that going and you've wrapped it right the way around the stick, then you can get your glue and then you can start pulling it round and the glue will sort of seep forwards and then bec become something that will wrap and roll, wrap and roll <laughs> around the bead and actually I can see quite a lot of glue sort of squelching along so it doesn't want much glue at all which is quite nice and when I can see that I'm starting to run out, I just put a little bit more all the way along. And then we just roll that around. 
And once you get the technique of it, it can be quite quick, I find. And this is something that I've done before. I remember doing it at school. It's certainly not a new craft. It's not something new and innovative that I'm telling you. There are lots of other videos about making paper beads and everybody will have their own spin and take on it. But today, um, slightly different to what we might have seen before, is I am using washi tape. And the purpose of that is to introduce some interesting colour. Interesting colour beads such as this nice rose gold or copper colour that we've got there. So you wouldn't get that if you were using sort of a newspaper or a magazine paper, but you absolutely could. You do not need washi tape. I'm only doing that because the, the coffee pot challenge told me I needed to use washi tape somewhere. And I've also realized that I need to make paper beads for my challenge that I have um, set my group on the Facebook page, our treasured page FB group. Hopefully you can find that. If you'd like to join in, you can. And then we're putting pictures of our makes up there. So this is this month's challenge for July. And then there's going to be a new journal challenge on the 1st of August. And that challenge goes up in an extra video from me on the f Facebook page. Treasured page FB group on Facebook. So that's just what we've got going on over there. And uh, nice to see people uh, linking in with me on Instagram as well. Big shout out to Jeanette from Scotland for making her very first journal using some of my instructions. Well, I think all my instructions. Uh, I think that's absolutely brilliant where you see somebody is able to make something and it to look absolutely fantastic. It just... Um, it's a proud moment for me because it means that my what I'm saying uh, is coming across on the videos as useful information for you to take forward to make your own creative joy and also to journal along on the channel and be able to make your journals and then enjoy some of the prompts and things that you've seen here. You can always look back on all of the videos. They're not going anywhere. They won't expire. They're up there for good. It's free content. A lot of it's tuition. I've spent a lot of my um, life growing up going to art schools, good art schools in England. I've spent eight years studying it. Um, and... Uh, it's a part part of me that I'm now rekindling, reawakening and remembering because I had to go and do other things um, and work in other sectors and, and industries and also have my family. So all the tuition and uh, university study that I have on the subject has... Uh, been pushed, pushed to one side over the years in favour of paying the bills and uh, looking after my family. And now, as we're coming out the other side of all of that wonderful time, um, I'm now able to find quiet crafts and things for me and tap into that knowledge and realise actually some of it isn't completely lost and it is slowly coming back. <laughs> so there we go, we are on paper beads today. I really like these, these are very pretty. I like the green, I didn't think I would. So there we are, we're reinventing um, washi tapes that you may not have a use for because they're a bit bright or you didn't know what to do with them. This is a good good idea here guys um so we've made flat beads well we could we can make flat beads using the washi tape just by punching and napkin as well napkin would work if you've got uh, some napkin glued down 
and you've got a bit too much, you have no idea what to do with it, you can now spend the weekend making paper beads, uh, swing dangles to go onto your journals and embellishments for, for inside the journal and also gifts and things. So we've got little presents and things that we have for our nieces and sometimes it's really nice as they're in their teenage years now and all they want is money and sometimes a gift card just feels so impersonal and I just think um, if you if you've seen if you've been watching along with my junk journal July and you watched me doing the tag with the spinner in it I just think that would be wonderful we'll, we'll do another one I think um, to put a pocket in it to house a gift card for either a friend or a loved one or for children especially at Christmas or and teenagers particularly when you just don't know what to get them and all they're asking for is money so they can go out with their friends or buy clothes um, and it feels a bit impersonal maybe a beautiful card something that will house one of these gift cards and some beads and dangle bits that uh, you know look at this we can make something really fun I think with all of this so that's what I'm going to do today and then those ideas can translate into gifting for people over over the holidays and uh, certainly for the people in your life that you just don't know what to get but um, the sort of people that like beads um, or things that dangle and I think this could be robust enough, particularly if you were to glaze them or maybe glossy accents or something like that. Uh, varnish them even with a proper jeweler's varnish. You could uh, have them kept for forever, you know, but they would be fine. Um, they would be protected. That's how you would deal with that. I've I've seen them. I've seen them being sold. And uh, great if you're doing any sort of travel journal or journal where you've been observing different cultures. Let's not uh, forget how much we all love paper. We're all connected to the paper. Oh, that one was a bit tight. There, there we go. We got, got that one off. And you just go until you've got a nice selection. If you're not used to using your hands in this way, you may find that you you get a bit of an ache to your hands because it is a, you are using muscles in your hands that you may not otherwise use. So it's important to not just sit there for several hours doing it. Just build up slowly, do a little bit at, the t at a time and just uh, make sure that you have a bit of a break in between doing the beads uh, stretch your hands and stretch your arms because you're not, you're then holding your body in a completely different way um, yeah so just work smart with it and don't overdo it if this is something you've only just uh, discovered it is quite addictive though <laughs> and it is quite fun because they come together really quickly and you can be amazed you go, oh I've got a whole bag of beads so experiment with the different colours, what we like. So the the, the gold colours is very cool. Um, and I'm just having a look at my different sorts of washi tape here. And it can be a way of dealing with scraps, dealing with unwanted or washi tape that's losing its stick. And you can just slowly get into the rhythm of it and build up quite a few. It's definitely a craft that you could do with children. And um, if you've got older grandchildren that uh, you want to just get them away from the devices and staring at a screen, and they might like this, they might enjoy this, making making things for their friends, bracelets. So these could be charms. So we could tackle the challenge for the coffee pot of charm. We could be making the charm. This could quite easily be turned into something with a post going through it and a 
jump hoop. Okay, when you start getting super sticky with your fingers, you're going to have to have a break and you're going to have to wash your hands, otherwise your bead is going to uh, be affected and then... This one's taking, it's, yeah, it, but I think I've got a bit too much glue on the stick now where things have seeped out, so I just need to be a bit careful. There should be enough movement there to pull that bead into where it needed to be. A little gentle roll and that will put it back in position. So regularly clean the stick and make sure you're not getting too gunged up with everything. But yeah, go, keep going with them and then... Uh, then you'll be able to pick out the ones you like best and work with those going forward. Another idea for your paper beads could be that you've got scrap paper from where you've uh, had drop sheets or you've used a jelly print or you could just put some acrylic paint onto tissue paper. So this is just standard tissue paper, it was just packaging paper and then I had a brayer, a roller, and I was rolling the tissue paper with the acrylic paint. And this was um, a jelly print block, if you know what one of those is. These are the papers that have come off of it that I'm not using. The print wasn't what I wanted, but nevertheless, the colours are interesting and it's very, very thin. So if you use a thick paper for your beads you're going to come out with very chunky beads if you use fine paper you will of course come out with much thinner beads so here we can see the difference just by using a thicker paper so this these big chunky ones was made using a thicker cardstock that is 121 GSM and I have put acrylic on it, I've embossed it, I've got stenciling going on. That was a whole other project from some time ago. We'll look at that another time. And then this is tissue paper. So I've just got an abundance of the stuff. I'm not using it for anything so now they're collage sheets of paper. Just, you know, another resource that is completely free because it was something that I can't really use now anyway. I'm going to therefore just have a look at this idea by tearing down a strip, not doing a triangle, so this is a different different idea altogether and that is to make a tube bead like that. So the same principle using the same stick and the same glue, same everything but this time, we're just going to want to tear off. We might not need all of that, but what I'll do is exactly the same thing again. Paper, a little bit of glue, and pull that round. And then glue the paper and not so much the bead, you just get better control. Start it off and then you can see how much you need. You want to keep it tight. If it's loose it won't give you the thickness that you need for it to feel like a solid bead. And at all times you want to sort of ensure that the bead can move on the stick. Alright, and then just roll like that. It's just a, it's just finding the right technique to keep it taut. And when you feel like that is a good thickness, you want to make sure you've got glue all the way along and then just tear, tear that down. 
I shall use that scrap, as you know, for something else. And then just, uh, what's happened here? Yeah, just make sure you've got enough glue to just finish off that last bit to seal it. Hopefully, Ooh, that will come off. And then there's your two beads. So we've now got these and you can make, make some of those and then they can go with these others and the whole thing is great. So you can, if you want them all to match, you then just do two beads, triangle beads, but in the same piece of paper and you'll achieve matching beads. Oh, they're lovely. So they are very nice. So that's a very nice little set that could could work together. And then uh, you can pick out other colours in the in that tone and make yourself something quite cool. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, for this next bit, you're possibly going to need a needle. We've got some embroidery threads here. I've got two different colours, but you don't need two different colours. Uh, you're going to need to cut three lengths, and I think I've got about half a yard here. I've got two green, and I've got this pale blue colour or a grey. Um, it, it doesn't matter, but three lengths of an embroidery thread, just something that you may have, uh, or some string, something with a bit of strength to it anyway, that it's not going to fall apart. Then we've got our paper beads here, so these were all the paper beads, and I've got a selection of normal beads as well. These are just from broken jewellery, things that I've collected over the years, stashed away. And then I've got two charms that I'm going to be using here, which is a little mushroom and a leaf. And I got these sort of green tones here. So this is a bit more woodlandy, I think, certainly garden. Um, then you're going to need, you're going to need something to clip it on to your journal or a project. So I've got this um, lobster claw closure and I've also got one of these clips so you could choose something like that but uh, because I think the challenge involves an eyelet I'm going to use that so that I can use the eyelet to hang that onto something uh, I'm not sure how that's all going to work but I'm now bringing in my charm so I've done the washi tape I'm looking at the charms and then we'll do the eyelet at the end somehow the other thing you're going to need is a bead with a wide hole like that um, or it could be one that you've just made, one of your paper beads, but make sure the hole is nice and wide and just a little bit chunky. So I've chosen this one and I think that's kind of nice. It fits in with the colour. So I shan't be using that. I'll put that to one side. Right, what we need to do is thread these two through the lobster claw and pull it through to the, let's move that out of the way, pull it through to the other side so that we've just got them all hanging off there now. That's created four lengths hanging down at the bottom. Just make sure they're all untangled and at this point you could just um, cut them to make them match or leave them because it's quite nice to have different lengths. So we'll look at that in a minute. Right, so far so good. Then we're going to take this third piece. We're going to fold it in half. And then we're going to cut it in half. So you need a pair of scissors for this as well. So cutting it in half. And taking the first one, you're going to thread your first charm. All right, so we're just going to thread the first charm through like that. So far, so good. You're then going to need another bead. So this could be one you've just made using your washi tape. It could be one of these beads with a nice wide hole. 
but I'm going to use for just for the difference of the contrast I'm going to use one from my stash which is a wooden one and I'm just threading that through so we've got a nice little dangle there so far so good so that's that one then I'm going to do my leaf in exactly the same way thread it through with the embroidery thread it does want to separate you can of course put it on a needle and do it that way and make things nice and straightforward for yourself or you can fight with it like me <laughs> and then what we we'll do is we'll get the matching beads so these two look like they're meant and just feed that cotton thread through so we've now got matching swingy charm pieces and then we've got this as well then you've got your four pieces here you just want to cut them all the same length you get your um, bead that you've made and you just thread it through making sure you're happy with the way it's going to be all the four strands going through that one bead all right so now we've got that okay when you've got your four strands through the bead you then want to take your charms that are loose at the top and you want to put them together and you are going to have to now try and get them through this large bead so then I'm just going to use some tweezers here and I'm going to get the ends of my charm I'm just going to push that through to the other side. All right, and then unfortunately I have to do it again with this one. So we're just going to get that right at the end and then push that through like that. That's why you need a nice wide bead. All right, so now the charms are through. Then this is more tricky because you need to put, you need to tie your charms onto the lobster claw. So you just need to thread that one through and tie that off. And just tighten it up at the top and make sure you're happy that that knot is not coming undone by tightening up like that then you want to just cut off the tail as close to the knot as you feel you can get away with alright then we want to do the same with this one now so that was the this is the leaf so we're going to separate those two and we're going to just put that through the lobster claw and we're going to tie these two together so this is a little fiddle but you will sort of see where I've gone with it in a minute and just make sure the ends are together and then make your knot All right, put that right to the end, open it out, check that it's not going anywhere and then cut off the top. All right, now what we're left with is we've got our bead, we've got our charms and we've got these funny knots and what we'll do is we'll just manipulate the knots around and we're going to hide them inside these brown beads so what you just do is you take one thread start pulling it around till you find the knot and then maybe move it up so you can pull that and then hide the knot inside the bead so now you can't find it, you can't see it, and we'll just put a squeeze of glue in there 
and then we won't know that that was ever tied there. So there's the there's the knot at the top for this one. So we just want to pull one of these until you get it to come out, and then you just bring them round until you can hide that one inside the bead. So you're just doing the same for this one as you did for the first one. Okay, that's that's it. Straighten them up. Here's your clasp, your lovely bead. You've got two charms. You could do it so that you had different lengths, but I think it, 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 it doesn't matter. This is a first go. And then on here, let's get those charms out the way. And now we've got four strands to put our beads on. And then we'll just deal with them one by one. And for this, I'm going to suggest using the needle because it will be simple and quick. Okay, once you've got your needle threaded, we're now in business to put the beads on. So you can start with uh, how you think it's going to look and start building up your charms. And I think I'm going to go with maybe a green theme here and then just putting on those ones and then I might like to have this one on here or maybe a blue to separate oh no I might want the blue there and maybe another green just check that I'm happy see if I like it and I'm just putting in a knot to make sure that we've got that all tied off and secure on the end. And then just start building up your pattern of how you would like to have your beads. Okay, so I have finished the other two and it's now looking like this. So the next bit is just going to be putting some Fabri-Tac and gluing things together. But first I just want to make sure that I've got my glue into the beads here to make sure that they don't, um, so that the knots stay put and they don't start uh, coming out. And so I just want to squeeze a bit of Fabri-Tac in there and I'll just use the pin just to really push that in there. Just leave that to sort of settle in. And then the other thing I want to do here is just add my floaty piece of sari silk. And for that, I'm just going to find the opening, squeeze inside a blob of glue for the Fabri-Tac. And then with my tweezers, I'm just going to push that inside there. And then that will just sort of hang down like an extra extra floaty bit and just maybe pull that bit off the end. Right, so that is my swing dangly spine jewellery, which could, you know, equally be hang, hung on anything. But that's a little bit delicate, I suppose. But um, so it just sort of get it where we want so we've got charms all in there we've got everything that we've said uh, the washi tape beads the charms now the ribbon and what I'll do is I'm just going to work out how to get my eyelet in place and what I think I'm going to have is I found a scrap of gold paper which could I think could have been off of a chocolate or something or some gold wrapping paper I'm not really sure I've got a piece of old packaging so I'm just going to stick the gold onto this card, giving me a nice, nice, um, whoops, giving me a nice thick card to um, put my eyelet into. I've also found this tag, which I think goes nicely with the colour tone. That's just um, that's just a standard tag which has been inked with some blue and green ink from the. Tim Holtz Distress range. And now what I'm doing is just cutting this down 
Um, I really just want a piece like that, I think. I'm just going to see if I can round it. Okay, then I've got that. I'm going to use the smaller side and make my hole here. Just try and line that up where I think the centre is. That's pretty good. I've got a little eyelet here, I'm just going to put that in. And just squash that down. Okay, I found a jump ring and what I'm going to do is just put that on there. Just open that up, thread it through my eyelet, close it. And just to make a really good job of this, I'm going to get the ink and just get rid of the white edge on that little piece there so that looks a little bit more aged and meant and if it falls off then it's got a little interesting bit on the back as well. Now I just want to make this all into a tag and um, I want a hole so I'm just gonna use my cropper dial hopefully Okay, I've got my tag, I've got my little um, eyelet with a jump hoop going. It's going to swing dangle off the end. Um, that's fine. We could have something else going on at the back as well just to lengthen it. But I'm just going to put it in position now and I think that's absolutely fine as a presentation or a nice little happy mail, something to send to somebody, a gift, uh, something to go on their bag or their journal or their key ring. A little gift which you can tinker about and play with and there is the idea I'm sure you will do one better than me and the ideas and the colors can obviously be muted and made very beautiful you could use glass beads to match in with your paper beads it could even swing off of a phone so maybe that's something that a granddaughter would like or a niece or um, a daughter you know something just a little bit different that could that could um, just add a little drama, a little in this um, Christmas. You could do Christmassy ones and you can certainly do the autumn style ones. So I think that's, I'm pleased with that. And I think that's a really nice beaded spine jewellery for anyone's journal. So I hope you have found some intrigue here that will inspire you to have a go using the paper beads and all of our ideas that have come out of the coffee pot challenge today. It's a lovely weekend project that you could make a few of these and uh, they look highly professional and that you could uh, go and gift them to friends and relatives and they could be a nice little favour for parties and put them on the table if you're having a, a dinner or something this fall or autumn and uh, just a little bit of intrigue it'll certainly be a conversation starter and if you've got beads like this uh, and you've got some charms just to add a touch of uh, um, expense to it all you've done is torn up some paper found some old junk jewellery and repurposed it into something far more interesting, personal and fun. Okay guys, so there we are. That's the coffee pot challenge for this week. I will be back next Friday with more ideas from the coffee pot tin and I hope that you have found some fun and value here. Above everything else, just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye bye now.